Let's go to John chapter 1. We're going to read verses 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So there are two. We'll get back to that in a minute. He was in the beginning with God. Now here's what I need you to pay attention to, verses 3 and 4. All things were made through him, and without him, without the word, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. His life that he gives to creation, the life that sustains creation, the life that preserves creation, is the light that illuminates men. So in him is life. He is the source of life, and he's a source of spiritual illumination. That's what it means by light, okay? Are you with me there? If you got that, the first thing you need to note is John is giving you an inspired exposition of Genesis chapter 1. John is looking back to Genesis chapter 1, the Genesis account of creation, and showing you the role that Jesus Christ played before he became flesh in creating the Genesis account of creation. Let me show you that. You don't need to know Greek or Hebrew. Let's put Genesis 1-1 with John 1-1 back to back. In the beginning, notice the words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Notice John 1-1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So John is telling you, in Genesis 1-1, when the beginning of the creation of heavens and earth began, the word was there. That's what John wants you to see. John is telling his audience who would have been familiar with the Old Testament and Genesis. John is telling his audience, you know, in the beginning, when God created heavens and the earth, the word was already there. The word was already there in the beginning when God created heavens and the earth. So then the second question you should ask is, okay, John, what was the word doing in the beginning when God created heavens and the earth? What was his role? What was his purpose? What was his function? And so John says, oh, let me tell you, John 1, 3. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. But hold on, John. John Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You're telling me the word was there in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, and the word was the one who brought the heavens and earth into being, into existence. He created the heavens and the earth. So then what are you saying about the word? Are you telling us that the word was the God who created heavens and the earth? Yes, that's what I just told you in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Oh, so the word was God who created the heavens and the earth, but he was with, he's with someone else who's God. In other words, what John is telling you, the God who created the heavens and the earth happened to be God and his word. God and his word together are the God who created the heavens and the earth. Now, when it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, is it talking about the entire creation or only the physical creation? And this is where I need your ears, because if you don't get this point, the Joe's witnesses are going to deceive you. When it says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, is it saying God created the entire creation, or is it focusing on the physical creation? The reference to heavens and earth, does it mean all the heavens, even the spiritual dimension where angels dwell, or simply the physical universe, the earth and space? How do we know? If you say the physical universe, then you just destroyed any argument you can make that Jesus is eternal. Do you know why? The Jehovah Witness and Greg Stafford want to convince you that Genesis 1 is talking about the creation of the physical universe. Space, the atmosphere, and the earth. That Genesis 1 is not talking about the creation of the entire created order. Do you know why? Because they'll tell you that even angels existed before the physical universe was created because the heavenly abode of angels is not part of the physical universe. It was created, but it's separate from the physical universe. So when God created the physical universe, that heavenly abode was created first, and the angels were created before the physical universe. 
and they want you to see that Jesus was there as one of those creatures that existed before the physical universe. See what they're trying to get you to see? How do you show that it's not just the physical universe that Genesis 1 is referring to the creation of the entire creation? All the heavens, the entire earth, all space, time, and place. All creation, even the heavenly abode of angels and the angels themselves. How can we prove that? Because if you can prove, Genesis is saying, the whole creation, the heaven where angels dwell, angels, the physical space, the physical universe, the atmosphere, all of that was created according to Genesis 1 by God. And therefore, proving that Jesus as the word was there before the entire creation was there before the heavens and the earth and everything within them, thereby showing Jesus is uncreated and separate from creation. How do we prove that's what Genesis 1 is referring to? Here's how you prove your position. Genesis 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens, Shemaim, and the earth, and all the host of them were finished. All the hosts of them were finished. It's that phrase the host notice the word the host all the hosts of them were finished keep keep in mind the phrase host the host how many of the hosts all their hosts the entire host of heaven and earth were finished in that six day creation week that phrase right there all the hosts of them of who of what all the hosts of heaven all the hosts of earth all the hosts of all the heavens, the heavens, plural, earth, all their hosts were created in that six-day creation week. Why is that important? Because let me show you what the host of the heavens refer to. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. You alone are the Lord, Jehovah. You have made heaven, the heaven of the heavens, the highest heaven of the heavens. You made it with all their hosts. There's that language again. The earth and everything in it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all, the host of heaven worships you. Any guess what the host of heaven happened to be that worshiped Jehovah, the Lord? Now, my 9, verse 6, one more time. You alone are Jehovah, the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of the heavens, the highest heaven of all the heavens. Not only that, with all their host. All the hosts of all the heavens were created. That's what Genesis 2.1 is referring to. The earth and everything in it, the seas and all that is in them. Now watch the last line. And you preserve them all. You give life to all creation. You sustain all creation. You preserve them alive. Who does it? The Lord, Jehovah, not someone else. The host of heaven worships you. Is there any doubt? Is there any doubt that when in Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 2, 1 says, God created the heavens and the earth and all their hosts, all the hosts of the heavens and the earth, he created in that six day creation week. That refers to all the heavens, even the heavenly abode of angels and all the angels. So Genesis is talking about the absolute creation of every created thing and the heavens and the earth, not just the physical universe. Now, let me give you further proof that the host of heaven refers to angels. Further proof. 1 Kings twenty two nineteen, 19. The Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. Any doubt what the host of heaven refers to? The entire host of heaven are standing in attention, in attendance, ready to receive their orders from God. Few more examples. Psalm 103, 19 to 21. The Lord Jehovah has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts. So the hosts of the Lord are the hosts of heaven who bless him, who praise him, who worship him. So do you see when it says 
all the hosts of the heavens. In six days, God created the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them. This refers to everything that exists in all the heavens, including the angels. They were all created in that six-day creation week. If that sunk in and you got it, when John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, all things were made through Him or came into being through Him. Nothing that was made by Him came into being without Him. Right? You, you caught that, right? So what is John saying? In the beginning, when God created heavens and the earth, the Word was there. So what role did the Word play, John? He played the role of creator and life giver. He was the one who created the heavens and the earth. He was the one who brought the heavens and the earth into existence, into being, and gives life to the heavens and the earth. What heavens, what earth, John? The heavens and the earth of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. Is that just the physical universe? No. All the heavens, the entire earth, and all their hosts, the hosts of the heavens and earth. Well, John, that means the entire creation. That this word was there before the entire creation. And this word was the one who brought the entire whole creation into being. All the heavens, all their hosts, the earth, everything in the earth. So he brought time, space, place, and matter into existence. Yes. But John, that means the word was there before the entire creation. Well, what do you have before the entire creation, John, eternity, but only God exists in eternity. Only God is uncreated. Only God is before all creation. Yes, but you just said the word was with God. So there were two who were there before all creation, existing in eternity, existing eternally. Yes, then you said the word was in Greek, theos, God. Yes. But the only kind of God that the word could be is the eternal almighty God because no other God exists in eternity. Absolutely. So the word is almighty God. Yes. But wait, you say he's with God. Yes. But there can't be two gods. Of course not. So you're saying God and the word eternally exists as one God? Yes. You got it now?